So I'm happy you're here with us tonight. Um, tonight is Good Friday, as many of you know here. And I'll tell you, the wind of the Holy Spirit is blowing. The wind of the presence of the Lord. His Spirit is uprooting roots. I prophesied this tonight. He is uprooting roots. He is uprooting corrupt roots that need to be uprooted. And the Lord said that what has been is not going to be anymore. And the power of his blood is going to overthrow and overcome all the decisive work, deci you know, works of the enemy in Jesus' name. That's what the Lord was speaking to me about. So during this season, we know it's uh, Passover. Passover started sundown on Wednesday. And <clears throat> tonight what I want to speak about is um, in this, uh, they call it a Pesach uh, uh, season. It started at April 8th. It'll continue on to April 16th. Um, we're moving from Passover to promise. I heard Chuck Pierce say that. And I'm going to read to you something that Robert Heidler said about Passover that I thought was very important because I didn't know this. Passover actually means it has three continents, consonants, which I didn't write down. You can watch the website. You can watch Glory of Zion. You can listen to Robert Heidler yourself teach on this. But what Passover actually means, or Pesach, that's how they say it. It means to throw yourself forward, to jump forward, a sudden action moving you towards your goal, to cover, to guard, to protect by covering. So by this action, God positions himself to, uh, to protect the houses of those who put the blood on their do doorpost against the destroying angel to spring forward, to cover, and to protect. So in this season, like when you understand the power of the blood, that was what that was all about, the power of the blood, the doorposts of our heart, that God covers us, he protects us, he hides us under the shadow of his wings, under the shelter of his wings, and he protects us and he guides us and he keeps us and he places us on a path that we need to be on, amen? And so I just love that description and of, of Passover. And, you know, for some of you who may be new watching this and you come from, uh, let's say, a Catholic background or, you know, when I, when I became born again, I, you know, got involved in a, in a Christian church eventually. Um, I never understood anything about the Jewish feast or that's what I thought they were called. But I'll read a scripture to you in a moment out of Exodus. Uh, it's also in Leviticus. They're, these three times a year were to celebrate the feast of the Lord. They're not Jewish feasts. They're feasts of the Lord. And three times he wants us to gather together corporately and celebrate. Now, uh, you know, aside from our own individual time, but I'm just saying these times. And so it, that would be at Yom Kippur, you know, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. That's in September, October. Uh, this is the season of Passover, which represents deliverance. I don't know about you, but how many of you need deliverance? I know I needed deliverance. We still need deliverance. God is constantly working freedom in our lives. And, uh, and then we go on to Pentecost. And so when I, when I started to understand this, it was like some, the heavens opened and given me a deeper revelation and understanding of the power of, of what God has for us. So we have the three feasts, and, um, you know, in Ephesians 2, it says that there's neither Greek nor Jew. You know, the wall of partition has been broken down. So it's not the Jews here and the Christians here. We're one new man. And so that was just so revel revelatory to me to understand the, um, the, that this was never to be taken out. We were never to not study this and not know this. In the Council of uh, Nicaea, I think it was 325 AD, you can Google this stuff too, um, they took away, they wouldn't allow the, 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 the Christians at that point to celebrate Passover because they saw the power of the blood. They saw the power of what God was doing and turning the world upside down. So it, it turned into a pagan understanding of Christianity. So that's why we talk about and we love to celebrate the feasts of the Lord because of, of freedom and deliverance and breakthrough. So in um, so as I said, today is Good Friday. And we know according to scripture, this is the day that Jesus was 
beaten. He was brutally beaten. But before I go there, let me read to you Exodus 12. This is what was happening. You know, for those of you who watched the Ten Commandments, I watched it the other night. It was awesome. But in the Passover, I just want to read this to you. In Exodus 12, it says, it's the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. Because there's no equal to our God, amen? amen. He says, I am the Lord. And, and the blood will be a sign for you and on your house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No plague will befall you or destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now, I just want to say this about Egypt. God loves Egypt. He's talking about the demonic structures that were, it was an idolatrous structure in Egypt. He loves the Egyptians, okay? This day shall be a memorial and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. That, that includes us. That's why we keep it. And then it, he gives a description as to seven days you will eat unleavened bread. And on the first day you shall remove leaven out of your houses. For if anyone eats what is leavened from the first day into the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. That's talking about the leaven. I spoke about that the other day, about how God wants us uh, during this period, especially at this divine pause, God wants us to check our hearts. He wants us to ask Holy Spirit to uncover any blind spots that are holding us back. And I don't know about you, but I'm not only my crossing over, I'm leaping over. I am not, I'm cutting off those old things. Consider not the former things of old. I'm moving on into the new. And this time, this glorious time that we have to seek our God without distraction. Isn't that the distraction that always tries to hinder all of us? Without the distractions... It's just such a marvelous time to really sit at his feet and hear his direction and revelation what, and what he has for us in this season. One of the scriptures that Robert uh, released that I thought was so beautiful is on Isaiah 31, 5 in the Passion. I'm going to read it out of, and it says here, just as a bird hovers over its nest to protect its young, so will Yahweh, commander of the angel army, shield Jerusalem or you. He will protect you deliver you, spare you, and rescue you. Isn't that awesome? Amen. That's what he does for us. That's the power of the blood. So the Lord wants to uh, restore to us an understanding of the power of the blood of Jesus because we're crossing over into overwhelming victory. And this is the first time, as you know, I, I'm sure you've heard a lot of the speakers, you know, of course I've heard, you know, I've been listening to Glory of Zion, but this is the first time since Passover, the original Passover, that we are replicating that, that everybody had to stay in their homes, that we all had to be with our families. It's the first time God is doing something. We are in a supernatural season. And it's done. we ask the Lord to remove any, any lens that's keeping you or that blinded, but ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten you and show you what he wants you to see in this season, all right? So there's a miracle working power when it comes to the blood of Jesus, and God demonstrated the protection, the protecting and delivering power of the blood when he commanded Israel to put the blood on their doorpost, right? And, and, and that's the same for us now. And I said, Lord, I want to hear what you have to say now. I know the power of the blood. When I first got saved, the, 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 the woman who mentored me, who was an ex-madam, who was in prison for eight years, you know, she came out. She had a praying grandmother who prayed, but she was like old-time Pentecost. And, you know, she, she taught all the time on the power of the blood of Jesus. That was the main message I heard all the time is the power of the blood, and I'm grateful for it. And so the power of the blood reverses and destroys every curse. In 1 John 3, I think it's 8, it says that Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. He came to destroy his works. And God is raising up an end-time army that is blood-stained, that knows their God and shall do great exploits. We are, when the enemy sees us, he sees Jesus because he sees the blood. And that's the power. Jesus' death, which I'm going to get into in a minute, is powerful. Life is in the blood. And, it, it, and when we understand the power of the blood, it causes breakthrough, causes deliverance, healing. 
restoration, financial breakthrough, but it's understanding how powerful the blood of Jesus is. We were told, plead the blood, just plead the blood. Now that's not a beggar's term. It's, it's a, it's a, a, what do you call it? A judicial term, but I'll explain that in a minute. So the thing that I was thinking about, you know, the Bible says in Leviticus 17, 11, that life is in the blood and, and, and the blood has a voice and the voice cries out. Cries out justice on our behalf. But I was thinking of this, that blood carries no color and it carries the life of God. And I was thinking that when we are all Christian, we're all one. And even when we take communion, we're one with him. And I'll read that scripture in a little bit. But I don't care whether you're black, white, green, yellow, you know, Asian, whatever you are, we're all one. There's no white group here. There's no black group here. We are one. The blood has no cover. There's no prejudice. Amen. There's no racism. Amen. The blood has won. There, it's, we're all one. When we, when we understand and we, we take the blood, when we understand about the power of the blood, that blood, we're one with the DNA of Christ. Amen. We're all one with the DNA of Christ Jesus. And I was just meditating on it. I thought, Lord, you are so amazing. And you know, the cross, we have an amazing cross here. The cross of Jesus is the power of, of God. And, and so, you know, when Jesus was, was died on the cross, when he was brutally beaten, he was tortured. There's a, I used to, I have it home somewhere, but um, doctors wrote about exactly what happened to Jesus. And, and he, he bled out. I mean, they, they ripped him apart. And, and I know a lot of you know that. I mean, his, he was, his beard, he was pull, the, the, the beard on his face was pl plucked out. He, they said he was unrecognizable. Put the crown of thorns on his head and pressed it into his skull. He had 39 stripes. And, you know, on it had um, metal and glass. And they said bone. And when they, but it was like, you know, a couple of tails. And so he, his whole back was shredded. He had to carry that cross. You know, he had, they nailed him. They, they put the nails in his hands and they shamed him. He was naked and they put the nails in his feet. When you think about why would someone do that for me? He thought of the whole world. It, it was a joy that we set before him. He did ask the father to, for this cup to be taken away, but, but to be brutally beaten so that we can live here free. When, when you meditate on just that alone, it's like, Lord, I can't be sick. <laughs> Lord, I can't be poor. Lord, I can't be depressed. Lord, I cannot, you know, live in offense. Lord, I can't live in a way that I limit you because you went all out for me. And you brutally died on a cross, and, and that's what they would do. He, he totally bled out. There was nothing there because when the guard put that sword in him or that spear, it was blood and water. And, and you know, when I was thinking of that, I thought, oh, my gosh, Lord. You know, like what they did in the Old Testament, what they did, it was, you know, the priest would make atonement once a year. And see, Jesus made it for us, and I'll read that scripture in a minute in Hebrews, but he did it once and for all Amen. so that we don't have to keep going over and over and over again of the sacrifice, but we remember what he did. Yeah. And, you know, in the Old Testament, they would get the spotless lamb. The Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians 5, 7, that he is our, our, our uh, Passover lamb who, who was sacrificed. See, Jesus celebrated the feast. And he became our Passover lamb. They killed that spotless lamb and they slit its throat and, and they bled, the animal had to bleed out. And the pre high priest would make atonement for the sins of the world. And that's what Jesus did. And um, so the Lord wants us to understand that this is really, really serious. And in Hebrews 10, 14, in the Passion, it says, By his one perfect sacrifice, he made us perfectly holy and complete for all times. And then Hebrews 9, 22, in the Amplified, it says, In fact, under the law, almost everything is cleansed with the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin, neither release from sin or its guilt or cancellation of the merited punishment. 
See, sin had to be judged, but Jesus had to give of himself who, will, who only was qualified to provide a way of escape for all of us. And see, the thing that I love about the blood of Jesus is that we are made righteous through his blood. We are in, that means we're in right standing with him. There's no good works that I can do that makes me righteous. See, that's why, you know, we can't be self-righteous. I mean, you can be whatever you want, but I don't recommend being self-righteous because, you know, it's, it's, it's the blood of Jesus. I am in right standing. I can go boldly to the throne room of grace because, Lord, I can go before him and ask for forgiveness, cleanse my heart, but I can go boldly because, Lord, you shed your blood and you gave me that right to be in right standing with you through your righteousness. He's Jehovah Sinkanu. He's, Jeho He's our righteousness. And I just think that's so powerful. You know, I, we speak to so many people that struggle with guilt and condemnation. You know, Romans 8, 1 says there's no condemnation or guilt for those who are in Christ Jesus. We are in right standing. When the enemy comes in and he's trying to make me guilty, I tell him to be quiet. I quote him Romans 8, 1 because there's no guilt in Christ. Amen. God condemns. But you see, I know that because I'm made righteous before God. God doesn't make me feel guilty. I'm in right standing with him. See, when you understand the sacrifice and the freedom that comes from the blood of Jesus, it's just, it's, it's, it's absolutely liberating. And it's really, really powerful. I'll tell you a story. When, uh, remember I said that when I first got saved, um, the woman who mentored me always taught about the blood of Jesus, always. And I was relatively new Christian, and I was just learning this stuff. And maybe some of you are really new, and uh, you're you're not you know you're tracking. But let me tell you, your spirit's getting it. And I was I didn't I was Catholic. What did I know? I was learning this stuff. And um, where she was ministering, it was at a YMCA, and I was in a hallway, and this guy was uh, high, and he was bothering me. And I thought, Lord, and he was just saying a bunch of crazy things, which I don't have to rehearse. And what he did was this guy grabbed me and picked me up and put me up against the wall. Now, I grew up in inner city, Patterson. And, you know, it was a little rough in that area. And we all knew how to take care of ourselves. Plus, I took karate at the time. And uh, I thought, Lord, I think I can take him. <laughs> I will kick his sorry behind if he doesn't back off. And so, but then I thought... I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus. And I did. And I, I said, I plead the blood of Jesus. And I didn't spit, but I, I pleaded the blood of Jesus. And as I did that, he let go of me and started screaming. And he bent over and he popped his ears and he kept telling me to shut up. And I was like, I was so shocked. And I'm like, oh my God, this works. And I, you know, and I, what I love about God is he meets us where we're at. Amen. I didn't have to be saved and go to a seminary for 22 years. He met me. I stepped out in faith, the little faith that I had, because I'm like, I'm ready to take this guy. And, and, you know, and I called out in the name of Jesus, and I said, oh, the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. And, and, and he just, like, freaked out. And, you know, and so... That was my, my first, my first personal experience when I, I thought, well, I'm going to do what she says. It wasn't even that I had this great revelation. I was meditating on it for four weeks. I just, I called out in the name of Jesus and I pled the blood of Jesus. And so that's the beauty of the Lord. And so anyway, you know, I, I just, I just love what what God does for us. In 1 Corinthians 6.20 in the Amplified, it says, you were bought with a price you were actually purchased with the precious blood of Jesus and made his own. So then honor and glorify God with your body. See, we were bought with a price. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. We were slaves. See, the Egyptians weren't the only slaves. We were slaves. We were slaves to whatever bondage we were in. You might say, well, I was a good person. Yeah, but you're still a slave. You weren't living in freedom. I can guarantee you, you didn't have supernatural peace. Because that supernatural peace comes from the Lord. We get that peace from the blood of Jesus. We get the peace. We get healing from the blood. We get all of that because of his death, his brutal beating on the cross. My husband will share on Sunday about the resurrection life. We have that spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead resides within us. It's powerful. You know, Jesus left us with a powerful weapon that the enemy hates. 
and he hates for us to know and talk about the blood of Jesus Christ. Because I have heard it, I know years ago, I would hear uh, people say that they didn't want to hear about the bloody gospel. Well, I have news for you. It's a bloody gospel, period. Jesus brutally was, he, he was beaten, and it's the power of the blood. Hey, let's, let's think about Satanism. People in the occult, they're making blood sacrifices all the time, because, but it's a counterfeit. There's demonic power, but no power you know, comes against the Lord power of Jesus Christ. You can't compare. It's counterfeit. It's the power of the blood. One time, you know, I was so zealous for the Lord when I got saved. And, you know, anyone who I met, they had to get saved. <laughs> they had to get saved. I don't care. So um, this girl that we were ministering to uh, was connected. They were all into witchcraft. You know, I learned a little more now. I became a little more mature and not being so pushy. But I thought, you know, you all have to get saved. So I decided to go into their home, which I'm not recommending you do this. And I went into their home and I anointed everything with oil and I laid the blood of Jesus over everything. Well, they were really upset <laughs> when they came home and um, threw my girlfriend out, which in a way it was a good thing because she shouldn't have been living with them anyway. But they all had to move out. They couldn't stay there. And I was, I was just, I was really shocked. I'm thinking, oh, come on. They couldn't stay there. They moved out. See, we don't understand our authority and the power that we operate in. That's for every single one of us. We all have this. Jesus is no respecter of persons. It's by faith. And I love what it says in 1 John 5, 4 in the message version. It says the conquering power of the world that draws its, uh, uh, the people's knees. Wait, how does it go? The conquering power of the world that draws the people to its knees is our faith. See, it's our faith. I did that by faith. I really believe. I, I'm like, why would anybody want to be involved in something that's so destructive? Jesus came to set you free. You're searching for something. I know. I got involved in crazy stuff. You're, I'm searching. I didn't know that Jesus was alive. I didn't know the spirit of God is alive. That's not a bunch of do's and don'ts. It's about living a life of freedom and victory. Overwhel overwhelming victory doesn't mean you don't have problems in life. It means he gives you a way to, of escape to get through it all. You know, like I said the other day, Jesus was in the storm. He was in the storm. He was in the boat with the disciples when the waters was tumultuous. He was with them. The storm was there. So my point about that is just because you're with Jesus doesn't mean you're not going to have tumultuous times, but they did cross over to the other side, didn't they? And so that's the beauty of it. And God wants us to understand the power of the blood. Now, I want to read to you a scripture out of Colossians, which I absolutely love. And uh, in Colossians 1.20, it says, Through the intervention of the Son to reconcile all things to himself, making peace with believers through his blood and through the blood of his cross, through him, I say, whether things on earth or in heaven. In other words, he reconciled all things to himself, making peace with believers through the cross, through the blood of the cross. He reconciled us through the cross. He reconciled us because he made peace and he, um, the blood was shed. All right. So then we have in Colossians, um, 2 14, it says here, I love this. Having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of legal demands, which were in force against us and which were hostile to us. This certificate he set aside and completely removed by nailing it to the cross. In other words, every legal document, every lie, every tormenting thing that the enemy has said against you was nailed to the cross. It says here, in this certificate he set aside and was completely removed by nailing it to the cross. And so it, you want to look at it another way. If there is things written against you, let's say you have a chalkboard here, things written against you, they were erased. So when the enemy keeps trying to bring up your past, they're not there. The only way you empower the enemy is by listening to the lie of what he's saying. If you have repented and pled the blood of Jesus over your situation, God doesn't remember it anymore. You see? So it says here, 
When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us, he made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal procession, having triumphed over them through the cross. Now, I love that because had the enemy, the scripture goes on to say, I have it somewhere, had the enemy known what he was doing, <laughs> He never would have crucified Jesus because he didn't know. See, God was not, you know, taken by surprise. The Bible says he knows the end from the beginning, the beginning from the end. He's not surprised. He's not surprised by this virus. He's not surprised by anything we're going through. He has a plan. And so the enemy, though, did not know that there was resurrection power and that Jesus was going to go take the keys from the enemy and then resurrect and impart that to us. See, the enemy didn't know that. Just like with this virus, the enemy thinks that he's taking all, all of us out. The enemy thinks that he's robbing us of all of our finances. But see, God has a plan. And just like there's resurrection life that took place that rose Jesus from the dead, we're going to experience true resurrection life of everything that the enemy has stolen from us, from health to death, people that have died to our finances. We're going to see resurrection in life. And the Bible says when the enemy's calling the act, he has to restore sevenfold. Now I'm telling you, that's what the Lord was showing me. He said, oh no, I am not taken by surprise. And so that's what I love. I said, oh devil, you know, you think you're so slick, but see, God has a plan and he has a, um, a, a miracle working um, strategy, you know, for all of us. And he wants us to understand that there's nothing impossible, nothing. You're praying for your family. You're praying for different situations. I love the story in, in Joshua, too, where Rahab, we're here, this prostitute. They were Canaanites. They were wicked people. And the two spies went to Rahab, and, and, and they said to her, well, she actually said, listen, I'll hide you. I want you to take care of my family. Amen. Right? And so they said to her, well, as long as you, he goes, you put a scarlet cord which, you know, of course, scar that represents the blood in your window. And he said, as long as you don't sell us out, he said, you'll be covered and protected. The beauty of that is God meets us all where we're at. So even if you never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, even if, even let's say you're backslidden, let's say you've just been, you know, you don't even believe half this stuff, but you're just listening today. I want you to know if you speak, if you cry out to Jesus, he will make himself real to you. He will protect you. He'll turn things around for you. That's the amazing love that he has for his people. I mean, who would die on the cross? Right. Who would be willing? I, he was sweating blood. He knew what he was getting himself into. But he was willing to die. I thought, oh, my Lord. I don't know, Lord. But that's why he didn't ask any of us to do it. Because I thought, oh, Jesus, we don't be in problems, have a problem here because I don't know that I'd do it. But he did it. And so I'm grateful. So, you know, there's a scripture in Isaiah that says, and remember I told you about um, pleading the blood. So how do we deal with this? Because this is not an exhaustive teaching on the blood, but maybe we can do like a four-weeker on this because there's so much on it. But... You know, when, when we pray, one of the things that we do is we plead the blood of Jesus. We say, Lord, I, I plead the blood of Jesus over my family. I, I mean, in my house, I, I'll just I draw the boundary of the blood of Jesus. I say, you cannot cross over in Jesus' name. And let me tell you, I have been involved in deliverance where I have said that and a person couldn't cross over the line. Right. There's power in the blood. Yeah. There's power in our faith. Right. It's not a little rabbit's tail. It's by faith. Right. And so yeah. to plead... Um, there's, there's, um, the scripture here in Isaiah, I love this scripture and I used to quote it all the time in ministry, Isaiah 43, 25 and 26, it says, I only, I am he who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. Remind me of your merits with a thorough, thorough report. Let us plead and argue our case together. State your position that you may be proved right. Now, that's, the, you know, the scripture where it's saying for those of you that are tormented by mistakes, those of you that are tormented by your past, that is the devil tormenting you. That is not God. He does not do that. It says here, I will remember your sins no more. When you repent of it, 
and you go before the Lord and thank him for the blood that was shed, the cleansing blood, it purifies us. He remembers your sin no more. So when you are tormented and that thought goes over and over, the mistakes or why did I do this or the regrets, that is not God. It's not God. He doesn't torment us. He convicts us, but he doesn't torment us. And so that word plead there means a judicial term, and it means to judge, to govern, to vindicate, a lawgiver, to litigate, and to execute judgment. See, he says, Let, let's plead. So when we're pleading, we're governing. I am telling you, I, I am legislating here. I'm telling you, don't you cross over. And I plead the blood of Jesus over my family. I plead the blood of Jesus over my health. I plead the blood of Jesus over my finances, over my business. See, we can do that. Right. We have that right to plead the blood. And so in Proverbs 23, 11, in the Amplified, it says, For the Redeemer is strong and mighty, and he will plead their case against you. See, he pleads on our behalf. And so, you know, you, you have to remember that the Lord goes before us. He's our covering. He's our shalom. He's our peace. And so the, because of the blood, the blood, <coughs> excuse me, of Jesus has given us access to go before the throne room of grace boldly. Amen. When I was in Israel, uh, I had this vision. It was just amazing. And um, I, I, we were just worshiping. And, and I saw in my, my spirit these angels walk in, and they were carrying the mercy seat. And on the mercy seat, the blood was just saturated. I mean, it was just pouring over, and it was just dripping. On, and then it came onto the earth, and, on, you know, like on all over us. But I saw it go deep down into the earth, and, and the blood just loosened and saturated all the root systems. Right. And I knew the Lord was speaking to me about iniquitous structures and that his blood is able to go through the hard ground, the hard places to uproot issues, to uproot situations. His blood, there's mercy, the mercy of God that will allow us then to come before him no matter how hard or how difficult your situation is, how much involved in sin you are. That blood is able to break through the hardest of hardest situations. Instead of three. And it was just so powerful. I mean, I really, I just, uh, that, that just so ministered to me. And I was just so thankful to the Lord for that. And, and that I said, Lord, he said, it's my mercy. My mercy triumphs over judgment. You know, I mean, enough is enough with what's going on with the corruption. I mean, God's not mocked, but he loves us. And he wants us, he's, he's given us this opportunity to get right. He's given us an opportunity to cry out to God. As children, it's a privilege to hear what our Father has to say to us. It's, it's a privilege. And so the Holy Spirit wants us to know that, that he's a good God and that he loves us very much. There's a scripture in Philippians. I want to see the next page, and I'm going to be bringing this to a close. Um, because of the power of the blood, there's a scripture in Philippians 1.28 in the Amplified version, which I, I like, and it says here, in no way be alarmed or intimidated in anything by your opponents, for such constancy and fearlessness on your part is a clear sign of proof and a seal for them of their impending destruction, but a clear sign for you of deliverance and salvation, and that too from God. In other words, this scripture is saying to us, in no way are we to be afraid or alarmed by our enemy. For this, when we are fearless and we're trusting in the power of the blood, it is a clear sign and a proof for their impending destruction. And it's like, like we're just saying, you are doomed. We are not intimidated by you. We are trusted in our God. We are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what that scripture is talking about. And you are doomed, Satan. That's what it means. You are doomed. You are defeated because we choose to trust God in this time, even with, with what's going on with this virus, because I'm not crowning it. I'm not calling it corona. It's not crowned. It's a virus. It's under our feet. But it is under our feet, and we are not intimidated by what's happening because we choose to trust in God. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So I trust God 
and I'm not going to be afraid by what's happening. When you're battling, for those of you, if you're battling with fear, listen, God's right there with you. He's there. He's saying, listen, plead the blood of Jesus. Call upon my name. Ask me to help identify and deal with the, the worry and the fear. What is that accomplishing anyway? Other than messing with your immune system, what is it accomplishing? And so ask the Holy Spirit, ask the Lord, just say, Lord, forgive me for the fear that I'm experiencing. I choose to trust you, but help me. See, he meets us where we're at. He's not going to just say, well, that's your problem. You should have gotten over this a long time ago. That's not how he is. He's going to say to you, come, come here, come and sit with me. You know, and, and, but renounce the fear, repent over the fear. And then just say, I renounce the spirit of fear. I renounce worry. I plead the blood of Jesus. You died on the cross for me. You took the crown of thorns on your head so that I don't have to be afraid. Right. You were brutally beaten so I don't have to be broken and scared. Amen. Lord, thank you for what you've done for me. See, I mean, he's there with us. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. So with that, I have a ton of scriptures here, which I'm not really going to read all of them. I have like 20 pages here that I wanted to read. But one of the ones I want to read to you is in Revelations. The Bible says in Revelations 12 that what do we do? We, uh, let me read it to you, the Amplified. It says here, well, let me see, do I have? Um, you know, the Bible says that we overcome, what, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, the Bible calls him the accuser. The accuser has been cast down. Amen. And, but we overcome by the blood of the lamb. We overcome when we're battling with fear. We overcome by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony. Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law. We're not under that, but see the enemy's a liar and he's going to constantly lie. If you don't know who you are in Christ and know what your rights are, no, understand the power of the blood, understand that you can walk in deliverance and freedom. You're going to be bad. Jesus didn't brutally get beaten for nothing. That's right. So that's why it's important that we understand what he's done for us and that he said, listen, I have provided freedom for you and for me. Psalm 107.2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Not going to redeem. He's redeemed us. If you're redeemed, say, let the, I'm redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb and I'm overcoming. I've overcome because of your blood, Lord. See, that's why you have to know the word. Jesus was, is the mediator of a new covenant and, and his blood was sprinkled once and for all. And I just felt like I, I was reading the scripture and I really am going to, we're going to have communion in um, Hebrews. I just really felt to say this. Um, in Hebrews, um, let's see, I think it's in Hebrews nine. Hold on a second. Um, everybody doing okay? Yeah. Hebrews nine. Ah, where is it? That, um, you know, where's the scripture where it says that Jesus died once for us and that, um, for anybody with, you know, involved in uh, reincarnation, Hebrews 10.10? 10, 10? No. Anyway, Jesus died once and for all. It's in the book of Hebrews, and it says that, um, you know, we don't have to, um, you know, we're not going to go through this, this, this sacrifice. So that's why we're not going to kill a lamb every month. I mean, every uh, year, you know, because Jesus became that ultimate sacrifice. Then it went on to say about how he, you know, when we die. Romans 6.10. That, okay, that's not what I wanted. But when we die, um, it's, it's, it's once and for all. There's, like, you don't come back again. You know how a lot of people believe in reincarnation. Um, but uh, for, I, I just knew today, the Lord said, I just needed to mention that we're appointed one time to die. That's it. Amen. And we're not going to have multiple, you know, lives or we're not going to come back, you know, as a cow or anything like that. You know, we're appointed once to die. That's what the Bible says. Jesus' death took care of that. And so, um, anyway, so we, we, we overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the lamb. And so, and we love not our lives unto death. And I'm grateful for that. And so I'm grateful that, 
that Jesus made a way for us. And so what we're going to do tonight is I want us to have communion. And so for those of you at home, um, you know, like my husband said before, you can have bread, you can have water, you can have, um, you know, whatever it is that you have at home for the elements. And But one of the things that the Bible says in, in, in the scriptures, um, it talks about us... Um, just remembering what Jesus did. All right, and I'm going to read it to you in a minute. It says here, When the hour had come, Jesus sat down with the twelve apostles, and he said to them, With fervent desire have desired I to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. With a fervent desire, Jesus desires to, to do this right now with us. And it says here, for I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it fulfilled, it, it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took a cup. After the supper, saying, This cup is for my new covenant in the blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goes as, as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he's betrayed. But let me just go back. He's, when, you know where it says, Do this in remembrance of me? Every time we take this, I want you to picture what Jesus went through, what he did. How brutally beaten he was for our freedom. And one of the things as I was meditating on this, the Lord said to me, I mean, this might not be a big deal to you, but it just really hit me. He said, as I take the blood, as I, as I daily, and, and I encourage you to daily take communion. As you take communion, as you go before the Lord, as we're, we're taking the elements as symbolically, right? And we're, we, we recognize what Jesus did for us to, to supernaturally bring freedom into our lives. He showed me, you know, how we become one with his blood. And he, you know, you know, you've heard the, the, the name of a book or someone say the meal that heals. I saw my body getting healed. I saw deliverance taking place in my family line. He said, it goes that deep. He said, it's, you're just not doing this at a Sunday service and just to do it. We're there going before the Lord, asking him to show us our hearts, asking him to heal us, asking him to deliver us, asking him for revelation, asking him to remove the veils off our eyes. See, this is a powerful time of communion with the Lord, koinonia, fellowship with him. So let's just eat of the bread. And Lord, we just thank you for the precious, 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 powerful blood of Jesus Christ. That though we were scarlet, red as sin, or you know, our sins were scarlet, you made us white as wool. Lord, I thank you that your blood is cleansing. Your blood is brings deliverance. You have breathed into us the breath of God. And you have given us life through your blood. So we take this blood, Lord, and we decree tonight that we are the healed and the delivered of the Lord in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we just thank you that your word says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And we thank you, Lord, that you have erased and you have blotted out all of our sins, our transgressions, as we have repented them before you. And you said, I've given you power and authority over all the works of the enemy. As we are one with him and we give no place to the enemy as we're one with him and allow the blood to cover us and walk in our blood bought gift. Oof, doors open, things break open, breakthrough comes. So Lord, I bless each and every person here. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are um, a, a faithful God who watches over your word to perform it. And we bless you, Lord. We bless you and thank you and declare tonight that you are so good. In Jesus' name, amen.